Hello and welcome to my dungeon. Today I want to talk about creative visualization and astral projection. I've been using visualization methods for a long time. For everything from sports, designing parts, drawing, writing and of course making YouTube videos. And two weeks ago when I was too sick to do anything but lay on the couch, I found that I could daydream myself into another world. A lone stargazing hill in a windswept mammoth steppe. And this way I could not only work on my writing with my eyes closed, I could also forget my own sickness for a few hours. So, let's use astral projection to travel to fantastic worlds. If you liked this video, consider liking it down below and subscribing to my channel. I find these reminders as stupid as the next guy, but the channel has hardly grown since I stopped doing them. So, here we are again. Thanks for your support. Let's start with the very basics of visualization. It's a mental technique where you picture something, that can be anything, in your mind's eye. Depending on how familiar you are with this, you might say, this is trivial or this is impossible. It is a skill though, and like any skill, it can be trained through regular exercise. Let's go through three exercises that will serve as an example of how you can train and use this technique. We start with an apple. Take the apple into your hand and take a good long look at it. Remember its shape, texture, color, the feeling of the apple in your hand. Remember the smell. Now close your eyes and try imagining the apple as you just saw it. Recall its shape and its color. Shouldn't be too hard and you, you can do it in rapid succession of course. Next step, eat the apple. Focus on the taste, how juicy it is, on the feeling of chewing it. Mm. Now that the apple is gone, try recalling your mind's picture of the apple. Try recalling its shape, its texture, how it felt holding it in your hand. Try recalling the smell. Then try recalling biting into it, the feel in your mouth, the taste, how juicy it is. And just recalling that apple is making my mouth water. Second exercise. Train a new sword move. Imagine yourself standing in your guard position, shield up, sword up. Imagine the position of your hand, your feet on the ground. And what you can do here, you can try to imagine this from your own first person perspective, shield in front of you, sword in your hand. But you can also try imagining yourself from a third person point of view, from the side. What does it look like? Where are your arms and hands? Practice the movement in your mind. Go through it again and again until you have a clear picture of what it should look like. And then when you go out and actually do the movement, you should find that you are already somewhat familiar with this. And you can go back to your visualization. How did you think it would feel and how does it actually feel? How did you think it would look and how does it actually look? In this way you can train your swordsmanship or your sports and your visualization. For our third exercise, imagine a character. 
Let's start with the one you're currently playing in an RPG. Imagine this character sitting across the table from you. Imagine what they look like, what color is the hair, is it washed or unkempt? What clothes do they wear for this occasion? And what drink is standing in front of them on the table? Now ask them a question. Start with something mundane. What is your favorite food? Now imagine your character answering that question. What does your voice sound like? These answers will come easy if you've already worked out these aspects of your character and if you've played the character for a long time. If you have not, you will find that the character takes longer to answer these questions. They might even surprise you. But you should find that it is still easy to come up with this information. Thanks to you doing this visualization exercise, you are in the zone now. So let your creativity flow and keep the conversation going. Then have the character ask a question from you. What would they be interested in? Aspects of your life? Or why you are always rolling so poorly, making them look bad? From this last exercise, you can infer how to use visualization to help with your creative writing. And you can use this technique in any aspect of the process. You can visualize characters. This will help you define them, flesh them out and make them more believable. You can visualize what these characters do, how they act in any given situation. You can visualize conversation between two or more of your characters. You can visualize objects in your world, like legendary weapons, but also places like a local tavern or the Cathedral of Healing, or the windswept stargazing hill in the Mammoth Steps. The more different aspects of the world you visualize, the more the image of the entire world will form in your mind. And once you feel that you can picture the world and its inhabitants in your mind, then you are ready for the next step. Daydreaming is something that every creative person should engage in regularly. It's a great way to get new ideas to notice faults in your work and areas you still have to work on. It is also a great way to work on these areas. In its most basic form, daydreaming is about letting your mind wander. Just calmly observe whatever thoughts and images go through your head without consciously interacting with them. You can do this as a meditation exercise but it also works well if you just do it during a mundane task that does not require much conscious focus on your part. Like walking, waiting or vacuum cleaning. Really, you can do this almost any time. Waiting for your coffee water to cook? Imagine dwarfs searching through dark caves for the lost home. Sitting in traffic? Imagine piloting a flying ship to a faraway horizon in search of Treasure Island. What is important is that you allow yourself the quiet and maybe even boredom to allow your mind to wander. Nowadays it's easy to constantly provide outside entertainment. Not only can you listen to music, but also podcasts, YouTube videos, audiobooks or Netflix shows. But if you are constantly bombarding yourself with outside voices, you can't hear your own thoughts. So try to forgo these distractions. Don't pick up your phone when you are waiting. Don't listen to music or audiobooks when walking. Don't watch Netflix when you lie on the couch. Then, when you are in a quiet place and allow your mind to wander, you can use the visualization techniques from before to guide your daydreaming. Imagine the starting point of your dream. You are walking through a dense boreal forest as part of an adventuring party when the trees begin to thin out and you step into a wide open steppe. 
Long yellow grass bows and waves before the strong wind. It stings in your eyes and blows your hair into your face. You lift a hand to hold back your hair and shield your eyes. As you look further afield, you spot something in the distance. Brown moving dots making their way through the tall grass and the barren rocks. And you realize that this is a herd of mammoth, followed by a group of fur-clad hunters. Now, if you listen to someone else's voice describing these scenes, it's more like listening to a story or maybe a guided vision. An RPG session can be like a guided vision if you picture what the other players describe in your mind's eye. But what I want you to do is be your own guide. Come up with your own pictures, starting points, and nudge your wandering mind into the directions you desire. Once you're comfortable with daydreaming, the next step is astral projection or astral travel. Full disclosure, this is something that I have not yet mastered myself. But I can do some theory crafting. Astral projection might be, and probably is, the wrong term for what I'm trying to achieve. But the name and the basic concept is cool, so I'm going with it. When astral traveling, you leave your earthly body behind and project your consciousness outward. Unbound by restrictions of the physical world, your soul can travel anywhere, every place in existence, and even places that are made up and only exist in your imagination. And this is where we want to travel. This is our dream quest of unknown Kadath. In reality, you use visualization and meditation techniques to enter a lucid dream state which you are still fully conscious and in control of your vision, but that appears to be as real to you as a regular dream. You can think of this as the next step in daydreaming, making full use of this altered state of mind. The easiest and most promising method I found is straight out of a YouTube tutorial for astral projection. You start by setting yourself your alarm clock to the middle of the night, between 2 and 5 a.m. This way, you build on your regular sleep cycle and dream state to reach the lucid dream state. Use a gentle alarm for this, music maybe, something that will rouse you from your sleep, but not slap you fully awake. I'd suggest the gold and silver sessions from Elder. Once you turn off the alarm, lay on your back and relax all the muscles of your body. Begin by wriggling your toes and work your way up your body, even relaxing the muscles in your neck and throat until you are completely relaxed. Now, as you breathe in and out, Focus on your intent. Visualize the place you want to go, that stargazing hill on the windswept mammoth step, and expect to go there. Imagine how the tall grass will feel under your feet and how the wind will ruffle your hair. Imagine the smell of rain in the air. Imagine you are there with the full expectation of finding yourself there. And your brain should do the rest as you fall back asleep. Asleep, yet fully aware and in control of your vision. This is the lucid dream state. In it, you can travel anywhere you can imagine. Be it a room across the house, the other side of the world, Mars or Middle Earth. Your imagination is the only limit. And in this world of your own imagination, you can talk to the characters you've created and ask them questions, or have them question you. You can try out the magic artifacts you came up with, experience how powerful they are and how it feels holding them in your hands. 
You can also allow your mind to wander. Let the journey take an unknown path and marvel at the novel ideas that your mind seems to conjure up out of nothing. Keeping a dream journal is a good habit for writers, but especially for travelers of the astral sea. Anyway, that's all I have for today. I wish you safe travels, dreamer. Until we shall meet again.